happy Wednesday. Welcome to the morning after. I am your host, Charlene Joint, and today we are recapping the four hour, two part finale of Hannah's season of The Bachelorette. And there's a lot to discuss here. And as you guys know, I start off every uh, morning after with a Starbucks buzziest moment. And this is of course brought to you by Starbucks Coffee at Home. And you can pick this up at your local grocery store. And yeah, the buzziest moment, as you guys know by now, is just something that stood out to me that I just want to talk about. And I thought long and hard about this week's buzziest moment. Uh, and it is at after the final rose, after Jed had left, before Tyler had arrived, and Hannah gave a little speech uh, from the hot seat about how she was proud of herself. And it really stood out to me as being this like po moment of positivity and empowerment that, you know, her engagement you know, what was technically the, you know, the goal in all this is now over. Tyler has not yet arrived. We don't know what's going to happen there. And she said that in the past she would have needed a man and would have forfeited her happiness. This was, uh, to me, this really stood out because this is a woman that we watched learn her own strength. Remember at the beginning of the season, there was a moment where she prayed and she was hoping to find the words and the strength to get through the season. She has proven, I think, not only to America, but to herself that she possesses those. And so this moment was not only just finding the silver lining and turning a, po a negative into a positive. It was, it felt like a feminist moment. It felt like after going through this experience, after being deceived, it wasn't about deceitful men. It was about the fact that she doesn't need them. And it was just, it was very empowering. I, I loved, I loved it. So yeah, Buzzy's moment. All right, you guys know by now that I go through in chronological order and there's a lot to unpack here because I'm covering both Monday nights and last night's episodes. So we'll get right to it, starting off with the rose ceremony. And this is the three to two. This is when Peter gets eliminated. Man, this was intense. Like now in retrospect, it's like, oh yeah, it was gonna be Peter. But at the time I was like, I really don't know who she's keeping or who she's sending home. And uh, I've tied, uh, I've made comparisons between Hannah and Emily Maynard a lot, and this three to two rose ceremony reminded me of Emily Maynard's, where it was like, she ended up sending Sean Lowe home that week, and it kind of felt like she could have ended up with any of them. And so it really, it, it was very intense. Okay, Peter joins Hannah in the live segment. I mean, this was perfectly lovely. It was like, oh, I want you to be happy, and well, I wish the best for you. Everything we said was real. Everything was fine and dandy to me until Hannah said, maybe if you'd told me sooner, making it about the timeline of Peter's, you know, profession of love and affections. I wrote in my notes, give me a break. <laughs> Don't put this on him. Hannah doesn't do much wrong in my opinion, but let's be honest, he wasn't even runner up. I don't think him telling Hannah that he'd loved her two weeks earlier would have made a difference in the outcome of the season, in my opinion. So I kind of just wish it had been like, I just had stronger feelings for someone else. There was nothing you could have done differently. I think a lead should never tell someone that there's something they could have done differently because that's kind of not true, in my opinion. Okay, moving on, Tyler meets Hannah's family. <sighs> Tyler, is there anything that Tyler does wrong? The first thing he says to her family is, you should be so proud of her, of how she's conducted herself. I love how Tyler always makes it about Hannah. He noticed there's so little ego here. He's never trying to prove himself to anyone, even her parents who, you know, he probably is trying to impress. He makes it about her and how well she's doing and how powerful she is, the strength she possesses. This really stood out to me. You don't picture the other guys really doing that. Um, and it really convinces me in general of his love for her. Um, unsurprisingly, her family, adores Tyler as they should and it just it stood I wrote in my notes that it doesn't feel like an accident that Tyler's uh meeting the family was before Jed's okay then Jed meets the family Whew, this was <laughs> I mean it was really <laughs> it was I felt a little for Jed in this because it was got really intense really quickly it became about finances and success and how difficult the career is um, I've got to say, as a musician, I would not want the pressure of, you know, meeting parents and being asked, like, how are you going to provide for your family? Like, you know, it's, it's always hard. And even if you're doing well, it's hard, as Hannah's mother said. So I felt a bit for him. <laughs> I loved here when Hannah said, 
that she could, she herself could also help provide for the family. Again, feminist moment, I loved that. But in general, Hannah's um, parents, I gotta say, did not behave unrealistically. I think that if I brought home a guy who was, you know, singer songwriter, they'd be like, "So, what are you like? What are your backup plans? Like, what is your plan B? What's, you know, what else? What other interests do you have? Just in case, because let's be honest, you're the exception, not the rule. If you make it big, that's just fact." And then finally, we're at the final dates. Of course, Tyler and Hannah go horseback riding because why not? And then, of course, Jed's final date has a lot of ominous music and they're on rocky waters and feeling like they're gonna throw up, but it just sort of felt like, okay, we get it. Like, this is the rocky relationship. Uh, this is the one that we should be unsure about. And yeah, we finally move on to part two. And right off the bat, Chris Harrison describes the proposal we're about to see as cringeworthy, and I really wish he hadn't done this. I just feel like they're too willing to spoil their own show. Uh, we don't need to be told that. We can decide for ourselves whether or not we find a proposal cringeworthy. Uh, we're already tuned in, after all. We're going to watch the show. It's not the reason why we end up tuning in. Um, so Tyler's breakup. Uh, he's such a gentleman. Until the very end. He, again, makes it always about her. He makes it about her happiness. Rooting, he's rooting for her and her successes. And he makes it, in general, unbelievably easy for her and on her. He's just such a gentleman. Like he just really, he didn't draw it out. He didn't guilt trip her. He was just like, whatever makes you happy. And it was both like, it was both beautiful and like heartbreaking. Oh, it was so, it was so. Okay, so then we get to Jed's proposal and he walks out with a guitar and immediately my heart just dropped. This is my thing about Jed. I get that he feels uncomfortable expressing himself, that's pretty clear, and he feels that he can express himself better through song. But I've done pretty easy on Jed with all the playing of instruments and serenading because I feel like in general it has been a time, like it's been time appropriate. Like he's not in the middle of a group date, like breaking into song or something. It's usually moments between them and he's prepared something for her. Or, you know, he, he's trying to do it as, as a romantic gesture. He's not making it a big show about him, if that makes sense, versus say, uh, there was an opera singer several seasons back who like in the middle of nowhere would break into song. Jed has not been doing that. Therefore, when he brought his guitar out to sing her a song, before proposing, I was like, no, because that was the first moment where it really did not belong. It did not belong there. Again, I get that he feels like he can express himself better through song, but there's just a time and a place. And I felt like that was not appropriate, personally. It's not about his music and his song. It's about how he feels for her. He should be able to at least verbalize that when you're proposing to someone, <laughs> okay? So then we get the aftermath and after the final rose with Jed, there's a big conversation, film, uh, filmed conversation and then the after final rose. I talk about this in my flow recap, so no spoilers here, you guys can go read that. <laughs> and then we get the after the final rose with Tyler, finally. I loved this. I mean, I loved how Hannah was like, well, you're an incredible guy. I'm a single girl. It just felt like kind of like unprepared and very candid and honest. And even though it was super weird, it felt kind of weird. It felt like the ending of a movie, you know, where it's like you don't really get the ending, but you get like the possibility of a, of a future. And I liked it. I found it refreshing. I found it different. I like to imagine that they are dating, but maybe they aren't. But, you know, we'll see what happens. It just felt less it didn't feel like a stagnant we're engaged now this is what's happening it felt more like we're gonna get a drink it was nice it was different so that's it you guys thank you for tuning in with me all season long great season be sure to read my flare recap which is out now and my pretty pandas recap which will come out later and let me know what you guys thought i love hearing your feedback and knowing your opinions whether or not you agree with me so get involved and yeah i'll see you guys here next season on Bachelor in Paradise. Okay, bye.